We're live here in New York City inside the Cube, our flagship telecast where we go out to the most important events in tech, get the most important stories, top trends, and we'll make some predictions around what's going to happen. And Dave, let's talk about some predictions. I think what's going to happen um, with this ecosystem is that next year it's going to be a huge conference. I'll predict it'll be around 10,000 type uh, attendees. You're going to see it kind of feel like a VM world. You're going to see that massive growth. I think the role of the data science will move from kind of, wow, and oh, oh wow, we need to hire these people, to actual specific job descriptions, use cases, and, and, and a, a playbook around what data science is at the application level. And the second thing I think you're going to see is a maturation of the platform and tools specifically. And I believe that as we said yesterday with the VCs, this notion of a feature can turn into a company. And in the tech business, uh, venture capital, you know, the old adage was, oh, that's a feature, not a company, and you wouldn't get funded if you had a good idea. But in this day and age, one little feature, analytics, business intelligence, can be so explosive and so viral, you can actually get now funding for it. The cost to start the company is lower with cloud, and with Hadoop and open source, you can actually build products out of theory, and that's going to be explosive. And you know, one little feature can change the world, go viral, and you can build around that. So I'm, I'm bullish on the ecosystem of entrepreneurs and the startups. You're essentially calling for a 10x uh, increase in attendance next year, which is was very dramatic. I'll, I'll throw another prediction in. I think we're going to see substantially more competition for the biggest prize. Uh, I think we all agree that that, that many, many multi-billion dollar, a billion plus dollars, you know, from a valuation standpoint, software companies are going to be made in this trend. I think we're going to see, right now, you've basically got Cloudera, which I would give as the, you know, the, the favorite. Uh, I think EMC is actually, is going to do some business. Hortonworks, to me, is the long shot right now, and LexisNexis, I think, is going to struggle. I think you're going to see other enterprise whales, maybe Oracle, maybe IBM, enter this space and go after the big prize, and, and here's why. In these marketplaces, think Microsoft and Intel. The guys who are number one make most of the money. Guys who are number two make a little bit of money. Guys who are number three maybe break even. And so I think that some of the other big enterprise whales are going to come into this space and you're going to see other competition for that top slot. Yeah, and I also, you're going to see, is you're going to see who can build the ecosystem, and that is the channel. And we're going to hear from Ed Albanese, who's at Cloudera, does all the biz dev. And what Cloudera will do, in my opinion, is they're going to continue their lead. I predict that next year, Cloudera will extend their lead as number one. Hadoop ecosystem will grow. I think there's going to be some movement at number two and three positions, but in this market, at one, two, three is what people are fighting for. There's no real prize for fourth place in this in this race. So a lot of jockeying going on. I think Cloudera is looking at the market and saying, you know what? If we just put the pedal to the metal, we've got 40 million in funding, and just crank it out, do the direct deals, get the higher deployments, build out the channel, and if they could make people money at the same time contribute to the open source community at the rate that they're doing, they will con continue to blow away the competition, in this case Hortonworks. Hortonworks is so far behind Cloudera, it's not even funny at this point. Right now there's a lot of PR, they're trying to get as close as they can on messaging to Cloudera, but clearly Cloudera has a lead, and I think that you're hearing from the Cloudera folks is they're going to they're gonna be mindful of that proprietary quote lock-in that we, you talk about, but I think they're smart. And I think they're going to put the pedal to the metal and extend their lead, and if they can do that, they will win. And again, it's about making money. Integrators um, and OEM partners, everyone needs to make cash. John, when does Cloudera really need to start turning a profit, in your opinion? Because clearly they're going to put the pedal to the metal and grow from a mind share and, and a market share standpoint, but yeah. they, you heard what, yeah. what Gregory said from Edmonds, you know, they're not actually paying them today, oh, yeah. uh, well, but I there's mean, value created there. So when, in your opinion, is it two years, three years, five years, does Cloudera actually have to start demonstrating that it can make money at this business? Well, Kirk Dunn, who's running uh, sales and marketing for Cloudera, is really sharp, he's dynamic, he was on theCUBE yesterday. This guy knows his stuff, and he's going to build an execution machine. You've got Mike Olson and Amar Awadala and Jeff Hammerbacker are strate strategists. They understand the chess game here in Cloudera, in the marketplace, so there's really two elements going on that's important to note. There's a chess game going on around positioning, how to handle open source, and build out the strategic elements of the business, and on the execution side, you have essentially a blocking and tackling, run like the wind, build out a customer base, and so there's, there's an emphasis on positioning in the marketplace. I really don't think profitability at this point is as more important as strategic positioning and execution on the sales and marketing side and the strategic side. Clearly. And, and just as an anecdote, two years ago I was at a Halloween party in my neighborhood and um, you know, some guy from one of the investment banks was asking me what I thought of Twitter. 
I said, that company's going to be worth over a billion dollars. And he laughed at me. He said, oh, Twitter, what are you, crazy? Twitter's just, you know, nothing. At that time, it was 2009. I said, you watch. Okay, look what happened. Twitter was the same thing. They focused on accelerating their product. They focused on accelerating their growth and not really focused on profitability. There was really no monetization strategy. So their goal was to accelerate their business. Now they're dropping in the monetization. So they had enough money in the bank through financing to build that out. So Cloudera just got $40 million in financing. Their goal is to ramp up, get the market position, continue to extend that lead. As you said, the big prize is who's in first place two years, three years from now. So I think Cloudera will make enough money. They have funding. They have a ton of cash in the bank. And it's really the combination of those two things. So I think Cloudera should not focus on profitability because that will slow their growth down. Yeah, so I, I think that um, my, my prediction would be the, the, there's a two to three year window there where they have to, as you say, put the pedal to the metal. Um, and it may even extend longer. Uh, they might have to raise some more capital. But I think it's, you're absolutely right. The prize is so large. I mean, let's, let's think of benchmarks. 